This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I feel another fight, and it was great. I'm not going to fight, okay? Learn how to fight the right way. You said I want to hurt him. I call him loser. I throw other guys in his face. Are you kidding me? and how to get what you want. That's the wrong way to do it. I don't know how to. The show. I hate you. Every young couple should see. There are rules for fighting. Here's truth number one. This is gonna be a changing day in your life. 10 seconds to air. I know things are tough out there, but we can do this. Here we go. I want you to get excited about your life. Four. And ready, three. see. Let's do it. Before I talk to this couple, Mark and Leanna, I want to play a piece of tape. You know what, Mark? Go be with your loser friends and family. You and them. That is You have been cycled. The whole time I've known you. I'm not going to fight, OK? Are you going to get in my face and yell like that, Mark? Mr. Angry I just exactly. told you I'm not going to play, exactly. and look what you're doing. It's me that's the bad guy, right? I blame you for forcing me to make that promise. I never forced you. You I'm did too. You said either you don't play or we're done. We're divorced. I'm going to find somebody else. You are I'll leaving. leave. Yeah. I'll take I'll your If you don't take your with you, I'll throw it out. So what? Now what? You're going to divorce me? No, I'm going to stay married to a loser for the rest of my life. That's why I hate you. That's why I scream. That's why I yell. That's why I cuss. That's why I don't trust you. That's why I don't believe you. That's why I don't support you. That's why I don't tell you I love you anymore. I'm like this because you have ripped my heart up. Everything that ever is supposed to be special or meaningful. You make it just like this. Uh, charming. Uh, what? Come on. What's going on here? We've been fighting so much for the last five and a half years. I think that's the only thing we know how to be good at. We do it just like that now. But what, but what, what is your goal there? What is your objective when you do that? I mean, y'all weren't raised by wolves. Come on. My goal when we're fighting is to hurt him as much as I feel like he's hurt me. I, I want to show you some numbers, OK? Take a look at the screen. Any idea what 62 represents? No. It's the number of consecutive moments without taking so much as a breath that you fought on tape. Now, that was just one argument, okay? Tape ran out, but the fight actually went on for 28 more minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, see this number, 225? That's the number of times the F word was said during that fight. Do y'all have, like, really small vocabularies? No. When we're fighting, I guess we're just not Okay, thinking. 21. That's the total number of times that Leanna told Mark to get out. Now, keep in mind, this is during a 62-minute fight. It's 21 times told him to get out in 62 minutes. Do the math. Okay, about every three minutes, you're out. Okay, five. That's the number of times Leanna threatened divorce. Twelve. That's the number of topics Mark and Leanna argued about during their 62-minute fight. Twelve topics? And here are the topics. Plans for New Year's, Leanna wanting Mark to quit the band, trip to Nebraska, broken promises, lies, friends, Mark's mother and brother, Mark's anger, Leanna being a control freak psycho, money, Leanna's exes, and Leanna's lack of compassion. 12 topics, 12 topics in a 62-minute fight screamed at the top of your lungs at one another. We have a lot of unresolved problems. You and, think? <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're here. Mark and Leanna's problem is really common. I mean, most people have no idea how to resolve a conflict. They get into an argument, they, they have some battleground, some topic, they have no clue how to have an argument that is actually productive. So today, I'm going to tell them and you how to fight fair. Disagreeing is okay, even fighting and arguing is okay, 
there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. First, let's see how Mark and Leanna describe their fights. I usually start about 90% of Mark's in my fights. She is more aggressive. She is a totally different person. She is Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde. Where are you going? To find some other guy? Get physical. Where are you going? Get physical on camera. Where's your ring? You haven't worn your ring for like five days. I know. Longer than that. There's no communicating with her when she's that angry. Get in my face all you want, because I don't want to save this. Where are you going? Mark will try to intimidate me, and he knows that I am afraid of him. He has choked me, hit me, pushed me. I've called the cops on Mark 10 times. Leanna has grabbed my arm, scratched me, punched me, slapped me several times. I'll hit him. I know it doesn't hurt him because he's twice my size. When Mark and I have big fights, I end up kicking him out of the house. Get out! No, I'm not. Get out! No! She's right in my face screaming at me, saying mean, mean, hurtful things. I'll tell him that I hate him, that I don't love him anymore, that I want a divorce. I'll tell him that he sucks in bed. It's just one more way to, to hurt him. If you try to touch my ass, my boob, any body part of me again, when you know I don't want anything to do with you... I called her a bitch. I called her a slut, a whore. I've been with other guys, and it was great! But how did you end up with me? It was a mistake from the beginning. Okay, now, listen, there, there really, seriously, is no point in going on if we can't agree on one thing here. You said your goal in there is to inflict pain. Okay, what is your goal? I really don't have a goal when this happens. I just, I feel so attacked when she comes at me like that. I, it's almost natural to defend myself, so to speak, to fight back. I don't have a goal when we argue. I don't want to. When we are arguing, yes, I do want to hurt her. I try to throw everything at her that I can to hurt her because she's hurting me at the same time. Okay. Um, how, how good is she at her goal? You, you, her goal is to hurt you. She is how, how's she doing? Really good. She has that down to a T. She can do that. What hurts the most that she says? Her name call, her, she calls me a loser all the time. She, what hurts the most is when she brings up the fact of other guys. She's been with other guys, they're better. There's one instance in particular she keeps bringing up whenever we fight and argue because she knows it bothers me and it does get to me. So she is hurting you? Yes, she is hurting me. I feel like Mark doesn't feel anything and I get so upset and I cry and I, feels so angry and when we're fighting and when we're together I don't feel like he feels anything at all and so I keep reaching and getting worse and worse and you worse keep trying, trying to ramp to it up it. yeah because what do you want to see him do do you, you want to see I want to see him care you want to see him go into a fetal position you want to see him break down and beg forgiveness what, what I just what you... want to see that he cares about me and us I want to see him feel something for me and it doesn't seem to me like he does Okay, well, you just heard him say, I said, how good is she at inflicting pain on you? And I thought he said, with great candor, uh, really good, that you are hurting him. So you should be relieved. Well, I'm not. Are I'm you not. proud of that? No, I'm not. Well, no, come on. Be serious now. Don't I'm give not. me that crap. I'm not Don't give me that crap. You that. tell me I do it because I want to inflict pain. And he just said, you got me. So you should be delirious. I, it's not, I don't want to inflict pain. I want him to feel something. I want to, him to feel something. not what you said. You I said, know. I want to hurt him. I call him loser. I say he's crummy in bed. I throw up other guys in his face. I, I, I do everything I can to undermine his manhood. I'm trying to emasculate and castrate him. And he just said, it's working. So you've achieved your goal. So you should be happy. Think about that. Coming up, when you ask this couple what their number one fight is about, they both say it's Mark's band. I'm going to tell you why that isn't even almost on the list. Oh, I'm loving you, Terry. Are you understanding? Support it. What have you supported me in? I'm not going to play, okay? Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil, crazy teen trends. Sent 125,763 texts in the past three months. <laughs> What are you talking about? Just normal conversation. Please don't give him your number. He doesn't need one yeah, more yeah. person to text. Plus, the punch out game. When teens allow themselves to be punched for fun, you can't build up a resistance to brain damage. Then on Wednesday, 
married eight months. Honeymoon hangovers. She'll stop at nothing to get her husband's attention. He has a curfew. 6 or 6.30, I have to be home. And 55 years of marital bliss. Well, almost. That's supposed to be the man's job. <laughs> That's Wednesday. major cause of us fighting is me playing in the band. Mark plays in the band every Friday and Saturday night. I don't like spending every single weekend night home alone. She hates the band, literally. Mark and I fight a lot over the band because I feel like he puts them first. It makes me very angry. I've been in the band for over 10 years. I've only been married to Leanna four months. I do feel a major responsibility obligation to the band because they do depend on me. I wish the band didn't exist. Well, we're talking to Mark and Leanna. Now, they're married only five months. They've been together for like five years, but they decided to get married. They're contemplating ending their marriage because they say they just can't stop fighting. I don't know if it's can't or won't, or they just don't know how, but we're gonna try to resolve that today. One thing they do agree on is that their number one argument, at least their most frequent argument, is about Mark's band. This isn't about the band. But that's your topic. That's what you fight about, right? Right. What really does the band represent to you? Um, I, I just feel like Mark puts the band first before me and the family. Okay, so what's the issue? I, I just feel like he doesn't care about me. Okay, that. then that's the issue. The issue is I don't feel cared about. I don't feel like I'm the number one priority. I don't feel valued. I don't feel prioritized. I feel like everything comes second to the band. It's not about the band, it's about what you don't get. If you felt loved, if you felt valued, if you felt like he sought your attention and wanted to be with you, the band wouldn't matter so much, would it? No, it wouldn't. So it isn't what he's doing, it's what he's not doing that's mm -hmm. bothering you. He's not helping you to feel valued, he's not helping you to feel loved. And I've tried to talk to him about that. I've, yeah, I've, I've told seen him. you try to talk. <laughs> um, I've tried to talk to him about it and um, I've asked him to, or I've told him that, you know, if you treat me better, if you make me feel important, then I would support you more on the things that you want to do. Look, that isn't what you said. I did. I have said that to you. Well, Mark and Leanna, do you know what an attack dog is? Yes. I mean, you've seen attack dogs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I want to show Mark and Leanna a piece of tape that depicts how she shares with him her feelings, and he shares them back. You know what? I've heard enough of that. I just met you and I've heard enough of that from both of you. Now that's how you share your feelings. There are times when I try Don't to talk. Don't defend that. Don't defend I'm that. I'm not defending that. I'm not defending that. But there are times when I try to talk to him and it ends up the same way. If you're trying to problem solve, that's the wrong way to do it. There are ways to contaminate a relationship and being an attack dog is one of them you both violate. Give me the list. These are the ways you can contaminate a relationship. Being a scorekeeper. I did this for you, you didn't do that for me. A fault finder. Are you guys fault finders? Do you not pick and undermine each other? It's your way or the highway. You're all over that. You turn into an attack dog. I mean, the list just goes on and on. But I mean, it's just going down the left side, you do them all. So I don't ask myself why your relationship is in trouble. I ask myself why not. You do everything, and that's a list. I didn't make that for y'all. I wrote that in a book called Relationship Rescue that I wrote probably five or six years ago. So you didn't invent this, you just perfected it. It depends on what you want. Do you, do you want to be right, or do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Okay, then you gotta quit being right, because you're saying, he cheated, he, he lied to me, he said he was gonna do this, and that's cheating, he didn't do what he said. And so I'm angry. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to 
I, I, don't, I, just, I don't know how to do that. Do you love him? Yes. Do you tell him? No. Not Why? anymore. Because I feel like if I show my feelings to him, that that gives him another way to hurt me. If, if he knows that I care, then that is, that gives him a way to, to use me or to, to use it against me. Take a chance. I have. Take a chance now. I love you, and you know I love you. Love and I you. wish I could show you more. That's why we're here. We'll be right back. Are you kidding me? You've been going through all of this because you're late? <laughs> Get the boy an alarm clock. Seriously. And later. Divorce me. I will divorce you. Trust me. I'm not going to leave you or divorce you. Lena yeah, threatens divorce about every time we fight now. If things don't get better, we will get divorced. When Mark and I fight, I am the aggressor. There's no compromise. It's her way or the highway. How is it my way or no way? You have to have control. Don't deny it. You're a control freak. I feel like I have to be right. Most of the time, I feel she's in the wrong. If you don't love me and want to be with me on holidays and special occasions and Friday and Saturday nights, then get the hell out! Well, today I'm talking about what to do if you and your spouse cannot discuss anything without it turning into a full-blown argument. I'm telling you how to fix that problem so you can have a healthy discussion. Look, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have hurt feelings. There's no question about that. What is the question is, what are you going to do when it happens? There's a way to fight fair, and that's what we're trying to talk about today. Now, I, you just saw Leanna and Mark engage in a destructive fighting style. It's my way or the highway. We've been through the list. They're attack dogs. They keep score. They find fault. They deliver these ultimatums with it's my way or the highway. When couples become self-righteous and believe that their method of thinking is the only acceptable point of view, th there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to turn. Now, do you understand that her anger and yelling is coming from pain? Yes, I do. I, I know you don't understand it at the time that she's in your face. Do you understand that the quality of any relationship is a function of the extent it, to which it meets the needs of the two people involved. And when her needs aren't being met, then she's going to be experiencing pain, frustration, fear. All of those things are happening with her because she has needs that are not being met. Yes, I understand. Do you get that? Yes, I do. So, that's, so the anger is nothing more than a symptom. That's not the problem. That's a symptom. Have you, do you wake up in the morning and ask yourself what you can do to, to make her feel better, to make her feel more loved, to make her feel more valued? Do you ever wake up and say, what can I do today to make my partner, my wife, feel better? Honestly, I mean, that's the way I feel, but no, I've never, never asked myself that in the morning. I've never took the time to think about it. Well, you, you never took the time to think about it? How busy are you? I mean, if you just eliminated 50% of the fights, it well, would be like you went on vacation. <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, you guys would have time you didn't know what to do with. You would have hours a week on your hands. You could take up crochet. You could, I mean, seriously, it's the, this, the time alone is, is daunting. We spend most of his days off, and most of our time together fighting. It is almost like a break when he's at work and I'm at work to not be together because that's pretty much the only time we don't fight. Yeah. Okay. What could he do? This, there, there, there comes a point when you have to stop complaining and start naming. Tell me who you want him to be that he's not. What could he do where you would say, oh, okay, I guess I'll just be a happy wife. Put no more complaints. I'll just be happy. Just... Now listen to this. She's going to put some verbs in her sentences here. Oh, well. What could he do where you just said, I won the husband lottery. Um, he could put me and the kids first. He that's, could, that's, that's too vague. What does that mean? Um, he could 
keep his word. He could do what he says he's going to do. He like what? What do you want him to do? So this is your chance. It's, it's really small things. When he says that he's going to be home at a certain time, he could be there or call to let me know he's not. Mm -hmm. When he um, wants to do something, he can be honest and tell me that that's what he wants. He could, there's so many things. He could surprise me with something nice. He could take me out to, take me out and make, make me a priority to spend time with me. Doesn't sound like an overwhelming list. I'm sure you're just getting started, but it doesn't sound like an overwhelming list, does it? No, it does not. She said, I mean, honest to God, come on. She said, be punctual. Let me know if you're not going to be there. Take me out once in a while. Sweep a girl off her feet. Are you kidding me? You've been going through all of this because you're late? Get the boy an alarm clock. Can, <laughs> seriously, does that, does it, do, well, see, it's not, yeah. here's, here's what I think. When I see people fighting about everything, they're really fighting about nothing. Yeah. I mean, come on. You just heard what she said. Those are little things that would make her feel better about casting her lot in life with you. Okay. I heard her. I will do those things. <laughs> I will work on those things. You can think of some more. We'll take a break. Coming up, Leanna says she's threatened divorce five to ten times during their five-month marriage. You know, that's once every couple of weeks. Uh, we'll have another number I need to talk to them about. It's 19. And it's the single most important number of them all. All you do is lie. He constantly tells me things that he thinks I want to hear rather than telling me the truth. Yeah, I'm not lying about anything. I promised I wouldn't drink, and I have. I promised I wouldn't smoke, and I have. You wanted me to back the up and say, it's okay, Mark. It's okay if you break your word to me as usual. I'm used to it. Threatens divorce about every time we fight now. If things don't get better, we will get divorced. Now take your ring off. It's wet. Take it off, Mark. Shut leave it on the table and get the out. I don't want to lose her. I don't want to leave her. I don't want this to end. Well, I'm talking to a newly married couple uh, who say they cannot talk about their problems without it turning into a huge argument where one of them inevitably threatens divorce or leaves the house. Now, one of their fights we recorded lasted 62 minutes. Now, I have one last number to share. It's probably the most disturbing number of all, at least to me. See that number? 19? What do you suppose that is? The number of times that Leanna held their three-month-old while they were fighting. They're gonna fire me! Don't me like that in front of the baby. Idiot. Shut up and listen to me. If I don't play that night, I'm going to run that back. Don't yeah. interrupt me. Stop yelling. You're scaring the baby. If you don't shut the up, Mark, I will take my kids and leave, and you can go yourself, because I will not be back. You make the baby. You treat me like the things that, you know what? Any decent husband would want to be with his wife. You're a loser. She's right there. Don't yell in her ear. You. Wish. All right, Andrew. You come down. What, are you leaving? No, I'm not playing away with him. No, you're not. Yes, I am. He's playing it right now, not I'll you. Play it with him, I'll ask you. Andrew, you need to go back upstairs. Mark's just trying to drag you into everything, as usual. No, Leanna, yeah, we're done. There's nothing more to discuss. Yeah, there right? is. You leave, or I will. Then leave. I will. Kids, I'm leaving. Mark can take care of you. He can figure out who's going to watch you from now on. What do you think about that? I really hate that we fight in front of the kids, and we tried. I we send them upstairs, and then they um, they can still hear everything. They know what's going on. Of course. How big is your house? Not big enough for them not. If hear you're not it. in Windsor Castle, trust me, they're in the middle of this fight. Uh, take a look at this quick clip. It doesn't need any introduction. The second I walk in the door, I have to do your job. Stop screaming. Go and pay the bills. Don't tell me what to do, you. Mark. Give me some money for the bills. How about that? I give you money for the bills. What? 
$250 a week? $1,000 a month? That's what you give me for the bills as my partner? As the breadwinner for the family? As a husband? Good job, buddy. Thank you for your help. That covers half the bills, over half the bills. That doesn't even come close to half the bills. Then show me what Not the bills close. are. We've gone over all the bills before. I've show proven me. to you. I've proven to you. No, you haven't. Show me. $1,000? That doesn't even pay for anything. It doesn't even pay for the house payment. I really want you to help us not do this. I mean, I really want to stop that. You understand that changes who they are. Yeah. It's not just something that happens and then they shake it off. It changes who they are. Kids have a unique ability to figure out why anything that goes wrong is their fault. They'll hear you arguing about money, and they'll go up and sit on their little bed and look at the shoes they got last week and think, if I hadn't wanted these shoes, Mommy and Daddy wouldn't be. Children have a unique ability to fill in the gaps to their detriment. It changes who they are. It makes them insecure. It makes them shameful and guilt-ridden. It changes who they are. You write on the slate of who they are. And they didn't do anything. You ready to hear what you need to do instead of what you've been doing? Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Crazy teen trends. The punch-out game. When teens allow themselves to be punched for fun, you can't build up a resistance to brain damage. That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't wanna be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity and you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. You're a podcast listener, and this is a podcast ad. Reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Lips and Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements, or run a reproduced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience with Lips and Ads. Go to lipsandads.com now. That's L I B S Y N ads.com. If you would like to purchase a tape or transcripts of your favorite Dr. Phil show, please log on to drphil.com or call 866 4 Dr. Phil. That's 866 437 7445. 866 437 7445. Mark and Leanna both say that they are desperate to learn how to fight fair to stop this self-destructive turmoil that they call a home, a family, a marriage, because they feel like it's going to end in divorce if they don't. Now, you just saw Mark advising his children not to fight. Okay, come on. Can we agree that if you continue doing what you are doing, this is going to end in divorce? It will. I can predict with 95% accuracy, I could go through this audience right now and ask people one question, and if they gave me an honest answer, I could predict whether or not they're going to get a divorce with 95% accuracy. Just from one question. I didn't even know anything else about it. You want to know what that question is? How they end a fight. It's not whether they fight. 
It's not what they fight about. It's not how long they fight, where they fight, when they fight. It's how they end the fight. Th there are rules for fighting. Number one, you've got to take it private and keep it private, okay? That means no kids, no neighbors. I mean, let me promise you, if your kids could, you know what they would say to y'all? Shut up. They have. They, honest to God, they would. That three-month-old baby, if that, if that three-month-old baby could turn around and pull that blanket on his face, he'd just say, shut up. Will you people just shut up? Put me down. Go in the other room. Please, shut up. I don't want to hear it. My son anymore. has actually told us that he would rather we not be together if that's what it takes to stop the fighting. Yeah, and how old is your son? He's seven. Out of the mouths of babes, a seven-year-old is telling you what I'm telling you, which if you don't stop, then quit. Okay? But you, can you do that? Can you agree that you're going to take this private? Yes. I mean, I'm not saying you're not going to have disagreements, uh, because you probably are. You probably are going to have disagreements, but you got to take it yeah. private. We can wait until we're in a place where we're not in front of the kids. All right, now, uh, let me ask you this. Do, do you, how do you feel about the character assassination? Y you realize that your goal in that is to inflict pain. Do you really think you can win if your partner loses? No. Because you guys are a couple, right? We're trying to be. This is like shooting yourself in the foot. It's kind of like your right foot stubs its toe and it says it was your fault, left foot. We've never really figured out how to be a couple and how to be a team, to work together. It seems like all we do is work against each other. You've got to take anger out of your vocabulary. And you've got to start talking about feelings. And you've got to change your goal for an argument. And here's the big deal. Your goal is to win, correct? You want to win the argument. You want submission, agreement, and compliance. Yeah. True? True. And you would love that too. When you tell her to shut up, leave you alone, get out, do this, do that, you would love to, to, to win. You want submission, agreement, and compliance, right? Yes. Okay, you've got to change your goal. This is going to sound crazy, but your goal has to be, I want to be heard. H-E-A-R-D, not H-U-R-T. I, I want to be heard. I want to know that my partner understands where I am. Mm -hmm. And then I'm willing to take the risk that they will respond to that in a constructive, productive way. Okay? Your goal is got to be not to win, to just be sure that the other person understands what's really important to you. It's hard for me to show him any emotion other than anger because I really feel like he takes advantage of it. When I cry, he'll laugh at me. You don't want to do that. I got some more steps when we come back. <laughs> DrPhil.com, brought to you in part by... Worried about cholesterol? Well, now you can lower it. This is Centrum Cardio, the first and only complete multivitamin that can lower cholesterol. Centrum Cardio. Travel consideration provided by... If your nails can't grow past the breaking point, give them Nutrinail Growth Formula to help brittle nails grow past the breaking point. For beautiful nails, get Nutrinail Growth Formula. We do our shows in front of a live audience, and we have a great time here, don't we, everybody? So if you want to be in the Dr. Phil audience, go to drphil.com and click on be in the audience or call 323-461-PHIL, 323-461-7445. We'll see you right here. Well, today we're talking to a couple who say they fight two to three times a day, every single day. They say it's a break when one of them leaves and they're not together, at least they're not fighting. They both admit they haven't gotten a clue about how they can talk about a problem without screaming, throwing curse words around, or even threatening divorce. Now, during the 62-minute fight that they had, she told him to get out 21 times. You want to f play? Get out. You go. Get the f Get out! Get out! You're not making me do anything. Get any out! Go! Get out. I'm done. Get the f out. No, I'm not going. Go going. Chase my work. Get the out. You get out. Get out of my house now. Get out. 
No, I'm not. Get out! No! Get out! No! Get out! Bro, get out of my house! Get out! Listen to me! Get out of my house! Get out! Listen to me! Get out! I'm not your wife anymore! Go f yourself! Get out! Get out! Get out! You get out! Okay. You don't really want him to get out, do you? I don't want him to leave, but, isn't but I want it the odd fighting to stop. That, isn't it odd that you yell, get out, get out, get out, 21 times when that's not really what you want? What do you really want? I just want the fighting to stop. Okay, then that's the issue. And you say, I want the fighting to stop, but yet you say you initiate 90% of them. I do, but not always. I mean, I'm not trying to start a fight when I initiate them. I'm trying to talk about something that... That I want to talk okay, about, but, but I don't Okay, but if you have any function above the brain stem, and I know you do, you would have to know what this is leading to. Yes. I mean, you say, I don't mean to start a fight? Come on. Well, you know where it's headed. I just don't even talk. I, I, the problem, I, I'll hold things in for a really long time and not say anything because I know it will lead to a fight, no matter how I approach him. Okay, are you paying attention to her when she talks to you? When she talks to me, yes. When, when she yells at you, no. No. That's when you dial out. Right. Okay, but here's what she's doing. What I'm saying here, I said you got to take these things private. Even your discussions, take them private. And number two, you got to keep them relevant. You, you got to deal with the issues. You don't want to deal with the topic. It's not about the band. It's about you feeling that you have needs that aren't being met. Now you got. You can't be a bottomless pit. You, this is a negotiation. It is a is a partnership. We share space, time, money, energy, all of these things. It's give and take. Okay, but you've got to keep this relevant. You've got to talk about what really is on your mind at the time. Okay. And you've got to be willing to sit down and really hear her. You heard me before I said the quality of a relationship is a function of the extent to which the needs of the two people are met. So that means you have two jobs. One, discover what her needs are. Number two, teach her what your needs are. You have two jobs. Discover what his needs are and teach him what yours are. That way we've got two people both trying to teach the other and trying to learn what the other's trying to teach. All of a sudden, we're coming together. You've got to be willing to take a chance and be vulnerable. I feel like I've done that a lot, and that's Listen, why I'm, I'm at the point where I feel like it, it was useless. Okay, then, then, then you're right. You need to get a divorce. If it's useless, if you're going to tell me, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, did that, did that, did that, did that, then there's nowhere to go but divorce, and that's not what you want. No. I'm trying to get his attention to say he needs to listen to you. You have his ears slammed shut because you yell and scream all the time. You need to stop doing that and start talking about what you really feel. It is a risk. She can open up to you and you can step all over her feelings and when you do, you seal your fate. Or you can deal with it with sensitivity and listen to it. If you're on the right side of an argument, you've got to let your partner retreat with dignity. You don't call your partner a loser and a horrible name. Neither, I mean, that, come on. You don't do that. If you're right, be a gracious winner. Let your partner retreat with dignity. And y'all don't do that, do you? No, we don't. No. Not at and all. And you need to be proportional in your intensity. You guys just go over the top. You got two speeds, zero and nuclear. Mm -hmm. you, you, you gotta be proportional. I mean, if one of you forgets to do something, come on, I mean, talk about it. But this is something that you've gotta be willing to take a chance of opening up and being vulnerable again. Give him credit. He's on the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he came. He's here. I mean, that, this isn't the husband's place they grow up and want to be. <laughs> right? Right. He's, come, he's on national television. He's here on the Dr. Phil show. You're listening, right? Yes, I am. So he didn't even pause. He said yes. <laughs> This can work out. I'll bet you separately, you two are delightful people. I bet your friends think you're delightful people and have fun and you get along with people, right? Yeah. Yes. It's just the way you're coming together. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to change your goal. You've got to wake up every day and ask yourself, what can I do today to make her life better? What can I do today to make his life better? 
You got to start living and loving and laughing and being happy about this stuff. Doesn't mean you're not going to have disagreements, but you're going to take it private. You're going to keep it relevant. You're going to be real about the things that you're talking about. You're going to decide, I'm not going to assassinate character in this. That's not what it's about. I'm going to take a risk and be patient. And I've got some things I want you to do. I've got a 14-day program that I want the two of you to do that's going to take 30 minutes every night when the kids have gone to bed. Okay. I have the dots so close together, you cannot screw this up. The dots are close together. They are connected with a bright red line. 14 days, give me 30 minutes a night for 14 days. Will you do it? Absolutely. Okay, yes. and I'm going to put it on drphil.com. I'm going to put the 14-day program on drphil.com so every single one of you will have it to do it. We'll be right back. This can work out. I'm serious. Don't let your antenna TV become just a box. Upgrade it with this digital converter by February 2009 or it will not work. Call this number or visit this website. Don't let your TV become just a box. For more information on relationships, how to improve the one you're in, or rescue yours from the brink, log on to drphil.com. I'm really curious with the audience today, just by applause, how many of you think this situation can be okay? Yeah. How many of you think, mm, not so much? That's about 50-50. They give you guys about a 50% shot. I said to you guys then and say to you now, I truly believe this situation can be okay. I don't think you have big issues in this marriage. I think you've gotten into a, a, a kind of auto-exacerbating, circle-the-drain, addictive pattern where you have to let it out and you're venting at one another. And I'm going to give you things to do where you're going to put something in, that, in its place. But I gave you the rules for fighting fair and keep those kids out of it. Change your goal when you go into this exchange. And be patient. I mean, come on. If it doesn't work, you've got plenty of time to be divorced the rest of your life. So be patient and give this a chance to turn around. Now, I'm going to put all of this on drphil.com, so go there. I got a little 14 day program, 30 minutes a night for your marriage, gonna make a huge difference. Now we're working on an upcoming show about mothers in particular who are consumed with anger, but are taking it out on their spouses, children, relatives, just about anyone in their path. Now if you're one of those people, if you're someone or, or somebody you know is an angry mom, log on to drphil.com, click on be on the show and share your story. I really wanna talk to people about how to handle our stress, pressure, and anger uh, during these really high demand times. Uh, Mark, Leanna, thank you all for being here. D thank you. you feel like you're going away with a plan here? Yeah. I do, yes. Okay. How would you vote? Make it or not make it? Make We're it. gonna make it. You really believe that? I believe that. Thanks for being here, so long. curious with the audience today, just by applause, how many of you think this situation can be okay? 
Yeah. How many of you think, mm, not so much? That's about 50-50. They give you guys about a 50% shot. I said to you guys then and say to you now, I truly believe this situation can be okay. I don't think you have big issues in this marriage. I think you've gotten into a, a, a kind of auto-exacerbating, circle-the-drain, addictive pattern where you have to let it out and you're venting at one another. And I'm going to give you things to do where you're going to put something in, that, in its place. But I gave you the rules for fighting fair and keep those kids out of it. Change your goal when you go into this exchange. And be patient. I mean, come on. If it doesn't work, you've got plenty of time to be divorced the rest of your life. So be patient and give this a chance to turn around. Now, I'm going to put all of this on drphil.com, so go there. I've got a little 14-day program, 30 minutes a night for your marriage. going to make a huge difference. Now, we're working on an upcoming show about mothers in particular who are consumed with anger but are taking it out on their spouses, children, relatives, just about anyone in their path. Now, if you're one of those people, if you're someone or, or somebody you know is an angry mom, log on to drphil.com, click on Be On The Show and share your story. I really want to talk to people about how to handle our stress, pressure, and anger uh, during these really high demand times. Uh, Mark, Leanna, thank you all for being here. Do you. you feel like you're going away with a plan here? Yeah. I do, yes. Okay. How would you vote? Make it or not make it? Make We're going to make it. You really believe that? I believe that. Thanks for being here. So long.